So the Rolex Submariner is considered by many watch enthusiasts to be the iconic men's luxury watch. About 18 months ago, I picked one up and at the time, I couldn't have been happier. That being said, about a week ago, I sold it. Why and how much? Find out, gents, in today's video. Specifically, the watch I owned was the Rolex Submariner No Date. Model number 114060. It was in excellent condition, had an automatic movement, 40 millimeter case size, made from stainless steel. It had a lug width of about 20 millimeters. It had a ceramic bezel with a black dial and the glass was sapphire crystal. And when I sold it, I sold it with the original box, papers, and manual. Now, when I picked up this watch a year and a half ago, I paid 7,500 bucks for it, basically straight retail from an authorized Rolex distributor. Fast forward today, that watch with everything I mentioned in excellent condition is actually retailing used for almost $11,000. So why sell? Especially if 18 months ago, I was in love with the watch. And I have to admit, when I got that watch, it was love at first sight. It is still, in my opinion to this day, a beautiful watch. But why would I sell? Well, reason number one is I honestly just was not wearing it. Now, this may strike some of you guys as a little bit OCD, but I actually do keep logs and I track when I wear what watch, probably because I'm in the industry and I'm trying to actually see which ones do I naturally gravitate towards. When it comes down to it, I wore this watch in a period of 18 months, nine times. And to make it even worse, about five of those nine times, I was wearing it simply because I was filming a video and I wanted to be wearing it for the video. Then I would wear it for 24 hours afterwards. But the point is I put it on for the video, not because I was just naturally gravitating towards that watch. Now it's a beautiful watch. Why wouldn't I wear it more? This leads me to the next reason is it's a great all-purpose watch. If it was the first Rolex I had ever owned and I didn't own any other Rolexes, you bet I'd probably have worn it a lot more because it's a jack-of-all-trades watch. You can dress it up, you can dress it down, you can wear it as your everyday watch. But here's the thing, I already had this Rolex Explorer and I'm wearing this as my everyday watch. And it showed because I wore this over a hundred times in the last year. And when it comes to a watch that I want to wear when I'm dressed up, whenever I'm wearing a suit, I'm wearing a sports jacket, I want something that's a little bit classier, I'm going to go to my date just, which I didn't wear a whole lot, but I did wear about 15 times in the last year. Now, dive watches are my favorite style of watch, but when I wanted to go for that look and I wanted something that had its special meaning to me, a watch maybe even with a little bit more bling that I could still wear every single day, I would go to my Yacht Master, which this one, by the way, I wore over 40 times this last year. And that leads me to the subject of redundancy because I love dive watches, but I found that the Rolex Submariner, even though many people consider it to be the iconic dive watch, wasn't my default dive watch. No, that belongs to the, my Tudor Black Bay 58. This watch right here is one I wore probably over 60 times this last year and absolutely love the look of more than my Rolex Submariner. And actually after that one, it's not the Rolex Submariner. It was my Manta Ocean King. This one absolutely loved the unique color of the dial and the overall build. Another great watch that I wore over 30 times this last year. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash that like button. By doing that, it feeds the algorithm. It lets YouTube know that this video is a good one and it'll help more people see it. And let's not forget the importance of meaning. The story behind that watch was probably the most boring, the least interesting story of all my luxury purchases. Basically, it was something that I was able to pick up at retail. 7,500 bucks. Anyone knows steel Rolexes are difficult to find. And it was something, there was an opportunity. I had the money and I thought, you know what? I can tie this into a new number of videos, which I did by the way, but it was just something that it never really grew onto me. Compare that to my Yacht Master. This is my first luxury watch purchase to celebrate my first million dollar year at Real Men Real Style. Or my date just. I bought this one to commemorate and to remember the success and all the work we put into the Menfluential Conference. In my Rolex Explorer, I've worn this one exploring the world with my family. For me, the more watches I own, the more it's about the memory, the emotion, the stories that are tied to the watches. This watch was actually given to me by the owners of Yema in Mauritius. I was on a trip with my son, with two people from my team, Gavin and Yuri, who we all got the same watch. And this is something that links us, that connects us. And every time I wear it, I have just good memories of that trip. Yes, diving with whales and me getting so sick on the boat that I puked all over the side of the boat. Yes, my stomach hurts just thinking about that now. And last but not least, 
I had the opportunity to sell it for a profit. So like I said, that thing is selling for $11,000 right now on the open market because they're hard to come by. I bought it for $7,500 retail. Guess what? I just sold it for $10,000 to a friend. So it's going to stay in the family. I know who is getting it and they're going to love it. They're going to wear this thing. They're going to really enjoy it. In fact, I sent it to them before they even paid me because I know them and I trust them. I'm like, hey, take a look at this thing. Let me know if it's really worth it. Hold it. And that's exactly what they did. They sent me that check immediately said, I love Love this watch. It's exactly what I was looking for. Boom. Both parties are happy. And here's the thing. I own that watch. I got plenty of B-roll. I now, with authenticity, can talk about owning that watch. But I was able to pass it on, make a little bit of money. And I think everyone in this situation is happy. Now, gents, I know you got an opinion. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Did I make a mistake selling this watch? Should I have held it? Should I have sold it for more? What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. So what video to watch next? How about the ultimate guide to buying a Rolex? If you're buying your first Rolex, if you're buying your fifth Rolex, if you are aspiring to buy a luxury watch, you're going to want to check out this video right here. I go into a lot of detail. Yeah, go check it out and go watch it. It's a great video and I cannot hold this up any longer. Dane, Thomas, do me a favor. End the video. We are done.